Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. Cellulitis can be defined as bacterial infection of the bone and its surrounding periosteum and soft tissues that can occur anywhere in the body. The focus of this video will be facial cellulitis originating from dental infections. Facial cellulitis is an acute and edematous infection of the oral or facial tissues, most probably caused by a dental infection. The infection arises and spreads either from a necrotic pulp or a periapical abscess into the bone, the periosteum and then through the facial planes of the soft tissues. Cellulitis which arises from dental infections and which requires further discussion are of two types, Ludwig's angina and cavernous sinus thrombosis. Let's illustrate each one of them. Ludwig's angina, which refers to the cellulitis of the submandibular region, was named by a German physician who described the seriousness of the disorder in 1836. The submandibular space is a deep space that is below the mylohyoid muscle and above the hyoid bone. The space houses the submandibular gland and its associated structures. In approximately 70% of cases, Ludwig's angina develops from spread of an acute infection from the lower molar teeth. After the infection enters the submandibular space, it may extend to the lateral pharyngeal space and then to the retropharyngeal space as well, resulting in respiratory obstruction. The patients need to maintain an erect position suggest airway obstruction. Other spaces like sublingual and submental spaces might also be involved. Involvement of the sublingual space results in elevation, posterior enlargement and protrusion of the tongue. Involvement of the submandibular space causes enlargement and tenderness of the neck above the level of the hyoid bone. Patient experiences pain and restriction of neck movements. Dysphagia, dysphonia, dysarthria, drooling and sore throat are also present. Generalized symptoms like fever, chills, leukocytosis and an elevated sedimentation rate can be seen. Treatment of Ludwig's angina centers around two major priorities, which include maintenance of the airway and resolution of the infection with intravenous antibiotic therapy. The antibiotic of choice is penicillin, with or without clindamycin or metronidazole. For those who are non-responsive to antibiotics, surgical decompression or drainage is suggested. The choice of airway maintenance de depends on the severity of the airway obstruction. Choices include orotracheal or nasotracheal intubation and tracheotomy. In cases of severe trismus and soft tissue edema in pharyngeal spaces, orotracheal intubation might not be possible. Cavernous sinus thrombosis, on the other hand, is less common and dental infection responsible for this variant counts for approximately 10% of the cases. To understand cavernous sinus thrombosis, we must simplify the anatomy of the cavernous sinus first. The cavernous sinus is a group of thin-walled veins located lateral to the cella tersica of the sphenoid bone. Some really important structures course through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus on both sides. These are the nerves associated mainly with the orbit, including the trochlear, the oculomotor and the obducens nerve, and also the ophthalmic and maxillary divisions of the trigeminal nerve. In addition, the internal carotid artery also passes through the cavernous sinus. This means that an infection resulting in a thrombosis in this sinus will also affect the structures passing through the sinus. Let's look at the pathways of infections that can lead to cavernous sinus thrombosis. Cavernous sinus thrombosis can occur through an interior or a posterior pathway. Let's draw a diagram and look at both pathways. Anterior pathway involves infection from the maxillary anterior teeth that perforates the facial surface of the maxillary bone and spread to the canine space where facial veins are located. This results in a septic thrombus formation in the valveless facial vein. Since these veins do not have any valve, infection from these veins can travel to a retrograde flow to the angular and to the inferior ophthalmic vein, hence reaching the cavernous sinus and resulting in cavernous sinus thrombosis. The infection from a posterior pathway involves spread of infection through a premolar or molar tooth into the buccal or infratemporal space and then to the pterygoid venous plexus to the inferior petrosal sinus and ultimately can spread into the cavernous sinus. 
In cases where the infection arises from the anterior region, symptoms can be observed in the orbital region as well. This includes edematous periorbital enlargement with involvement of the eyelids and conjunctiva and also along the lateral border of the nose and may extend to the medial aspect of the eye and periorbital area. Pupil dilation, lacrimation, photophobia and loss of vision may occur as cranial nerves associated with the eye region are compressed within the cavernous sinus. Last but not the least, proptosis, chemosis and ptosis are noted in greater than 90% of affected patients. The infection might start unilaterally but it may spread to the contralateral side through the intercavernous sinus which connects the cavernous sinuses on both sides. Other generalized symptoms like fever, headache, nausea, vomiting and tachycardia might also be observed. With progression of infection, signs of CNS involvement are also observed. Treatment for cavernous sinus thrombosis secondary to the dental infection involves surgical drainage combined with high-dose antibiotic medications similar to those administered for patients with Ludwig's angina. Offending tooth should be extracted and drainage is required if fluctuance is present. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like, subscribe, share and comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.